the <laughs> Lord and long. That's why I said it was like the 1978 mm -hmm. version. That's when you can sit there, you can ask somebody this, you can think about it, you go get a drink, you're like, okay, I'm going to get back and I'm going to ask them. And then get your hustle on. Wait, but then you could go get your girl and be like, go over there and ask me if you wanted to dance. If you want to dance. Y'all talk about that for another five minutes. Then you walk over there, you want to dance, you get on the dance floor, you got three minutes, and then you could get the number. Listen, and that was the definite workout. You was trying to lose weight. Yeah. Listen here. <laughs> that leg be hurting. It was like yeah, when you exactly. first started roller skating and your left leg hurt because you don't use that because you don't know how to cross over yet. Oh man! <laughs> you talking like, about when you going around the circle? Yeah, when you, you going around the circle, roller skate, you like you know okay? You Speaking just learning what? The sippers skate tonight at the Olympic. We ain't doing that because they ain't pay for commercial time. Now let's focus. Yeah, I'm hot topics. Look, hot I'll topics. Let you know how to use. All right, Braxton family values. They supposed to be canceling. What? I didn't even know it was still on. <laughs> I knew, I knew you didn't. Yeah, you know. Because you don't really be into the reality stuff. But I watch my reality TV. So the Braxton Family Values is supposed to be canceled because they don't like the money, I guess, with negotiations. This is a legend, so you know what that is. Take it for what it's worth. You right. know what I mean? And I read it off another site. And um, I'm thinking, but y'all haven't done anything. So if you haven't done anything, mm -hmm. how much money do you really want? It's those ratings. Believe that. Because if it was successful... Why wouldn't they make? Why wouldn't was, they, yeah, yeah, why wouldn't they make it? Make it stay on. Yeah, well, of course the ratings are going down. Yeah, that's all. And that's why the money is going down. Yeah, Nobody. the ratings are going down because they're not doing anything. And then even I'm not gonna lie, Tamar is entertaining. She is entertaining, even when she left off the. Well, she said she got well fired. Whatever it is, anyway, she's no longer on the. What is it? The real. The real. She's entertaining on the show. And then when she kind of like drew back from the show, people stopped watching it as much. And she was the one that actually introduced it. to so, you know, let's, hey, let's do reality TV and go from there. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen. So they went on. Uh, Tamar, not Tamar, Tony allegedly was against it. And then she decided to just go ahead and just come on board. Long story short, they canceled supposedly, allegedly, um, oh, her and her boyfriend, allegedly, her new boyfriend, uh, they're not together anymore. I'm not really concerned. I'm just giving it to you lovely people who are concerned and who are Tay Marsh, and she's supposed to be dropping another album, so I can't wait for that. Uh, Tony Braxton and Babyface is supposed to be dropping another album. Can't wait for that. Um, it's all alleged, so take it for what it's worth. Mm. The Mass Singer. Have you watched The Mass Singer? I watched one episode during the first season. That's it? Yeah. You, so you weren't interested? No. What about I, I you? Did you ever see ridiculous. The Mass Singer? No, but I keep hearing good things about it. See, I like The Mass Singer. Maybe because I like entertainment. I, I just think, like, the episode I saw was when um, Anthony, what was his name? Antonio Brown uh, got revealed or whatever. Okay. And the lady, the one lady from the Pussycat Dolls was like, I think that's an athlete. You know what because I mean? Because of the hints. And I was... Did. No, at that, I don't think they gave any hints at that time. They did. They gave me I, hints at the I don't beginning. remember. I don't. I don't remember. But the point, the point to me with the show, I was just like, yeah, this is like, um, like, not for you. It, it, yeah, it like, like, it, like it, it's like, well, what's the, what's the thing? Like, what's the prim Like, what's the whole thing about? It's like, like it's just a game show, and then you just get to take the title home. Okay. And it's just guess who it is. I think it's just showcasing other talents. Just have a variety show. Yes, that's what it is. A variety show and you can't guess who it is. Now, it was so funny because I watch it because I'm a fan of The Masked Singer. Okay. And I w the reason I became a fan of The Masked Singer is because of Nick Cannon on his own. When he left America's Got Talent, remember he couldn't make a joke about it and all that other stuff. And so they fired him from America's Got Talent. They wanted him to apologize and all that extra stuff. And he said he wasn't going to oh, do it. Oh, he didn't make a joke. He, 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 he did not. He told the, the truth. Lawyer. I, That's what he did. He, he, he said how he truly felt. But you can do that behind the mic if you're a comedian. He ain't. Yeah, he's supposed to be. Oh. That's what it was. Supposed to be. Yeah, that's Charlie. what it was supposed to be. It was a stand up act. And that's what he was trying to be. Now, here's the I thing. I thought it was during an interview when he said that. Uh-uh. It, it was during, like, a like a stand-up comedy act. But, you know, you got a lot of people that's supposed to be comedians or trying to go into that field, and they're telling bad jokes, real bad jokes, because you got Nene Leakes who decided she was going to be a comedian. Remember, she was telling that she got mad at the heckler and said that she should be, hopefully, her Uber driver rape or something crazy like that. Yeah, but then, she did something else that got her. What was it? 
she's, she's not funny. Then you got yeah. Wendy Williams who decides she wants to be a comedian. Not funny. She said a, a bad joke, which I kind of watched, and I was like, okay, I'm going to act like I didn't hear that. That was on her show where she was talking about um, Drew Carey because he was on The Mass Singer as well. And his ex-girlfriend, I guess her, uh, this is all alleged, her boyfriend, the current boyfriend, not Drew Carey, but that's how they associate her so we can know who she is. I still don't know who she okay. is. Pretty much said that um, she fell off her balcony or allegedly pushed off her balcony by the ex-boyfriend. Did you see, did you read that? Yes. And it was like horrific. And she was like this, come on down. Uh -huh. That was a horrible. That it was, was a horrible <laughs> joke, and it was like ah. So then there were some people, you know, I was talking to, you know, on the blogs, you know, and they were like, that was a terrible joke. It was like I think she fell off the wagon again because some of her jokes are bad. Now she did make a joke that, and it wasn't a joke. She was, I think it was the truth. I felt her. She had um her gays, and we love our gays, and they were in the audience. And this guy was talking about, she was like, it's for the girls. He was like, I'm a girl. It was, uh, oh, Valentine's Day. Galentine's Day. That's what they were talking about, Galentine's Day. The hell is Galentine's exactly. Day? Exactly. A guy wouldn't know what Galentine's Day is. I'm a girl, and I'm like, forget that. What Galentine's Day is when you don't have a Valentine and you hang out with your girls. Or you do have a Valentine and you hang out with your girls the day before Valentine's Day. And y'all all go out and have a dinner. That's called a girl's night out. Basically. I'm not kicking it with my girls on Galentine's Day because you lonely. Not happening. What about you, Nick? I did kick it with my girls. On the 15th? On the 13th? Uh, no, on the 14th. No, on the 14th. Mm -hmm. But that's because my husband had to work. But then I, you know, picked him up. He got ready and then we went to the event. And we had our table and everything else. So y'all had y'all Valentine's Day, but you did your Valentine's Day. Yeah. Guess what, Nick? Was I there? No. Exactly. I'm your girl, but I ain't going. I ain't kicking it with you. <laughs> I'm like, nah, it's cool. And I know that you feel as though that Valentine's Day is overrated. Well, I think I think if you go back and you look at what, like, okay, if you look at the history behind it, mm -hmm. it's, it I think we kind of celebrate it in the wrong way. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, well it's, it's terrible. Well, it's just, um... <laughs> I ain't want to talk about last week because it's yeah. Valentine's Day. We want to ruin nobody's well, love I mean, day. You know, the thing was, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, yeah, but... Okay, so back to what I was saying, her and her bad jokes, they felt that she, um, as far as that particular, it was on, it was Galentine's Day, and it was uh, one of the guys out there in the audience, and she was like, you're not a girl, you're not going, and she was like, you're, this is not for you, this is just for girls, he was like, it's for girls, I'm a girl, she was like, you don't have a menses every 28 days, sit down, now, I, that wasn't a bad joke to me, it wasn't, but I, I do, this is, just me and the views of male is not the same as the views of the co-host. Oh, child talk about let me put that out there. Yes, you want to be a girl, but you don't want that part of it. Mm -mm. Now, some of them are talking about where they're able to, you know, with science and everything, they're able to give birth and all that extra stuff. Kudos to you. You can have that too. What? Yes. Yeah, yes, they're trying, trying to do where they can have, like, you can get a reassignment surgery. Um, there was one place I was, I don't know what article or something I was yeah, reading. It was an article. And the article was where a guy got reassignment um, surgery. And the guy that he was dating, he told him that he used to be a boy. He was like, no, because they had sex, but he had reassignment surgery. So I guess he couldn't tell. Yeah, but, but how does having that... a baby, I don't know. Okay. Sound like some science fiction to me. But science I gotta, fiction? I got to look it up. I got to research that. Cause I don't... Yeah, with all this stuff going on, I, I understand and... Do you do what you want to do? Uh, you know, but genetically, you are still a man. Okay, okay you heard her. Look, I'm like, you heard her. Sorry. Right there. Sorry. I mean, especially when it comes to, like, wanting to compete in women's sports and things like mm -hmm. that, especially with the racing and stuff, you're genetically still a man, so it's never going to be to our advantage anymore. Okay. It's always going to be to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Kudos to you. If, with the sports, I, with, I agree with yeah, that. I think that's sports, not okay. Yeah. And like, but like made she up said, different. Yeah. and like she said, you don't have a mens you don't have a period every month, so <sighs> Well, I just think the issue is is gonna they get to pick and choose. Exactly. <laughs> it's gonna happen is sooner than later. It's just gonna be like, well, guess what? Everybody just competing against everybody. So it's not gonna be segregated. It'll just be. I mean, but the, you know, but then, I mean, but there was a. I mean, there, there was, was a time. You know what I mean, what? but there was a reason why you had, you know, separation yeah. because of the physical makeup. Well, well right. some, some of it was because of like sexism, 
you know, I mean, because they, you know, they didn't feel like women should have did a lot of, should do um, athletic events and stuff like that. And then you had the movement of Title IX that came into colleges and all that kind of stuff. Go ahead, talk you know, about, elaborate. I'm going to let you have it. Title but, but IX I, is, I just, Title IX is. Oh, Title IX was an um, act that was passed that would, that made it so that uh, NAA, the N, NCAA and other organizations provided uh, opportunities for women to take part in athletics. Mm-hmm. It was like in the 1970s. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm glad you said that. Now go ahead and elaborate a little bit. Well, well, I just, I just think like you know, we're at this, we're at this point where, where like, when you, we're, we're it, like, it, even, even when you think about movies, some people say, well, why do we have a best actress and actor category? Why not just best actor and whoever wins out of that, male or female, is it? You know, well, that means there's less trophies to go around. <laughs> That's what it <laughs> is. Thing. But, um, but the other, the other point of it is, is that like, are we, are we at a point to where we feel that? open competition can happen like like can you have a for example let's say could could you have a woman be drafted to the M, to the nba now you can shout out to Maddie I and mean, columbus i mean you can <laughs> you can but i'm saying like is the nba is the nba gonna look you mean the w i was thinking the wnba you said the nba nba okay i apologize so no so i'm saying like is it are we at a time where we can have a league that's made up of men and women and then, and, then, and the answer to that may be, it, it depends. I would say it depends on the position the person plays, and then it b- depends on like the competition that the person is up against. I say no. I wouldn't be interested in watching. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not interested in watching well, women's sports. W. I, I'm just not interested like, in. Well, it. I will say this: when I was in, when I was in school and stuff like that, we we would play pickup games with with uh, the girls who were on bat- pick were basketball. Pickup. Team, I don't like want to go to no game and what like my child she played basketball my yeah. son played basketball but I'm gonna be honest with you I think that's probably why she got into basketball because she was a cheerleader <laughs> and mm-hmm. I was like oh okay she's like you don't even watch me I was like oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm watching him like what's happening on the field you know what I mean and then basketball season came and she was like I want to play basketball but I did watch her with volleyball and stuff like that but I was I'm more into I, I like the watching the men uh, I, yeah. <laughs> like, Period. Yeah, I ain't like watching the men. But you know what? It's a different energy that men have versus what women have, and they they bring to each sport. And go I to a track. Go to a track meet and and just watch. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, definitely. Yeah, you can see the shift in that whole energy uh-huh. when they when the men are out there on the court versus when the women are out there. Not to say the women are bad; they just have a different energy. Men have a different energy. Maybe I did like Are we talking about track and field or we talking about I'm talking about track and field, field, basketball, oh, okay. football, all that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not interested in seeing a female out there. And, in my, and I know what it is. I was brought up, we were brought up. It was like, women, no, don't hit her like that. Don't do, you know what I mean? But I see these, they got the little girls in the low league. Listen, mm-hmm. <laughs> those cats don't even care she a little girl. Yeah. Well, it's like that. They're like, boom! I'm like, ah! Yeah. But it's like that. With, like my son wrestled, it opened up a whole new world for me to see, like what was going on. They got women wrestlers. You got yeah on high school teams. On high school teams, women wrestlers. Yeah. Ten years, she gonna be hashtagging me too. Yeah. Oh, and we females so. the same. I don't know. Oh, because, he touched me that way. Oh, he uh, grabbed me here. I, I think. I think that. I don't. I don't know. I don't see that happening. You don't see that happening. No. No, just, just just because like um I think it's understood that even with even with the boys when they wrestling each other it's uh, it's understood like if I want to win I may I may end up grazing against somebody's private you know I don't necessarily <laughs> want to do that but if I'm up here wrestling for my life go ahead I beg the different teacher like you said hashtag me too you knew what you was getting into when you went to some uh, married man's hotel room and he offered you. Ten crumpets, okay, or a quaalude, and you decided to take the quaalude. Now, thirty some years later, you got the Me Too movement. So, therefore, that is going to lead to the same thing. Yes, we know well, it's wrestling? sports now. It, we know it's about sports now, it's but later on, sport. they're going to be like you know, and you might have those boys, but like, oh, I'm wrestling hurt. This is my chance to 
do something or grab nah, something. No, they trying to win because don't know God want to lose to no girl. No, that's right. right. And it be and those right and those that. wrestling matches be. But it, some of them might take that advantage. Some a, a wrestler a wrestler become let's say president or vice president, and they be like, oh yeah, when well, he wrestled me, he grabbed me here. He grabbed oh, me come here. Come here, let me talk to you. Mm -hmm. And then he gets to, what's that attorney? I can't bloom. What's her name? I can't even I think of her really name right that. now. They, they get it. Come on now. I can't do that. Let's hurry up and get through this. The hologram. Whitney Houston's hologram. Mm -hmm. What y'all think about ho holograms, period, bringing people back from the dead? Like uh, the Michael Jackson one was in Vegas. I think the only way it would be appropriate is if it was in like a, a Hall of Fame museum or something like that. And like they wanted to show, but Jim, you could show somebody like footage or something like that. But if you pay, if you're paying like a ticket to go and see this hologram, then that's just a money grab. Okay. And yes, it okay. is. It is the money going towards the family? If the money is going towards the family, when, when then I can see. Her, her sister-in-law is the one there behind this, and her brother is playing, and they're wondering, is this for money or what is it? And she said it was for her legacy because they tarnished it so much. Yeah, they did. That well, she, she tarnished, they tarnished it. it. I'm like, she she tarnished let, it. let me put it out there that they tarnished it so much. That she wants people to remember how she was. Now you said they tarnished. Tar that was a question. They tarnished it or did she tarnish it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, my my overall thing would be like I think it would be cool if you went to like a museum, like if you went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and then like if you went up to like a display that was for a certain group, and it was like this hologram of the Temptations dancing or something like that. Okay. That would be awesome. You know, but if you do to have a show, sell tickets for a concert. Yeah, but if you're doing it like for a concert or something, I don't think that's I don't think that's cool. Go ahead, Nick. What's your thoughts? I, I, I don't think they should. I mean, I mean, like you said, like he said, a memorial. You know, the Hall of Fame or something mm -hmm. like that. Yes, but like just be getting money. You just don't want to see an yeah. image of her. The image of her, she she's gone. Let her rest in peace. We have pictures, we have videos, we have, mm. you know, that we can go. YouTube. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> of the actual person, we don't need no hologram. Okay. We can see them. When would you YouTube a video like you said? Yeah. Okay. The same same thing is going on in Hollywood where they're, you know they can do that deep fake thing where like. They can make you look like somebody else, and it looks really good, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, okay. And they were saying like they, some people were talking about using that technology to to have actors from the past be in new movies. Let the new nah, let the forth. new people be in the movies. Well, I mean, I mean, this is the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, how do we get past? How do we get past this whole? When does nostalgia turn into something really bad? With a hologram. And when this technology <laughs> allow that to when happen. When it becomes a hologram. Yeah. So these are these are these are larger moral conundrums than um issues of nostalgia. Okay. Because if you can, should you? Yeah, no. I think you should. And that's a great question. If you can, should you? Sometimes just leave things alone. Right. Leave well enough alone. I wanna um back up because we missed a, a point and I kinda didn't say anything about it. But I want to know what your thoughts are. Let's talk about Dwayne Wade. I was waiting for the mom to come out before we even talk about it. Dwayne Wade's son and Gabrielle Union's stepson. Um, he's 12. His name was Zion. He would like to be referred to as Zaya and a reassignment surgery at 12 years old. What's your thoughts on reassignment at 12 years old? I don't know. I, I would say... I, whenever anyone gets that gets a surgery like that, they have to go through a lot of um, um, counseling and, and, and uh, stuff like that first. I I would just say, I, I part of me would say wait, you okay. know, but the other part of me would say like if if he's truly convicted uh, to like the, the, that he feels that he's in the wrong body. There's a lot that can that can be. Um, there's a lot that can go in his favor of, of making that transition if he if it At happens before puberty. But okay. it's just such a big. That's just. You have a fence. I'm. I, I would say no. Okay. I would say don't do. It. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't allow. Okay. I wouldn't allow my kid to do it just because of the risk of any surgery. I mean, look at Kanye West's mom. She went and got a tummy tuck and died. You know what I mean? So, I, 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 
that would be my concern. It's like, is it like, is this something that can wait? And yeah, but that's this is that's a really tough conversation. Okay, go ahead, Nick. What's your thoughts? <laughs> Y'all gotta see her face. Listen, Lord, Jesus. you are a child. You you don't really know. What if he gets this reassignment surgery, and then ten years down the line, he sees a beautiful woman that he some just like absolutely falls in love with. You a woman now. You can't, and she's not, and she's not gay. Okay, she she okay. doesn't swing that way. Don't want. Then now you just stuck. You don't really know yourself as a child. That's why a lot of these children are now. I'm gay. I'm this. I'm that. You don't really know yourself. Okay. You're you're exploring, yes, but you don't know yourself, and you really don't know yourself till you get grown. And some of us grown folks don't really know ourselves. So that's to me, that's just too much right now. I I like that. I like that answer. I want to uh, catch some of you lovely people up on that. They, the media has been saying Dwayne Wade. And Gabrielle Union's son. It's her stepson. I want to put that out there. Mm -hmm. And yes, Gabrielle Union is, I'm sure she's helping Dwayne um, make that, you know, as far as like accepting his child and all that other stuff. And she's a great supportive wife. She's 47. He's 38 years old. So she probably, you know, looking at things from a different angle. However, the biological mother spoke. So see, that's what I was waiting on. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, we ain't going to talk about this till I hear her come out. The biological mom spoke and she is against it. She said that um, that she wasn't for a reassignment because here again, she feels as though that her son is too young. She was like, Zion is too young. Now, I'm going to share some personal stories. Don't be mad at me. I ain't going to say your name. I've seen where, you, let me ask this question first. If your son, if, if your son, if your son was gay, would you appreciate or had gay tendencies, and someone witnessed something, would you appreciate your friend calling you and letting you know when they were younger? Yes or no? Or would you rather them not say anything? Um, I, I would say that, okay, <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if the gay part matters. Like, I mean, I'm trying to understand, like, what could be, like... okay. I, I witnessed I witnessed something, okay. and I'm like, hey, so I call one of my friends to let them know because they probably don't don't know. Mm -hmm. And what would your response be? So if I call you, like, hey, Rugo, um, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. Do you think that blah 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 blah? What's your response? How would you feel? I think that anytime somebody gives you something and it's coming from the right place, mm -hmm. that you should at least hear them out. Okay. You know what I mean? Because you don't know. Because cause, cause I'm looking at this like, okay, what if they see something? Let's say, let's say for example, that like, how, like uh, for the sake of argument, that that child was gay but didn't know how to tell you. And you hear, you hear so much about kids being in that situation mm -hmm. of feeling like, you know, they... Sometimes they commit suicide because they don't know who right, they are. They go into depression. Right. They go into all those kind of things. So if it, if it's something that I could say, okay, this is a good early warning for me to be to get involved, not to change who they are, right? But to get involved and, and be supportive. I think if you're using it for a tool like that, then that's fine. Okay. I, I would what, what's your thoughts? Would you want to know? Would you want your friend to tell you? Yes, I would. Okay. So I was in a situation and I saw this. So, and I'm saying, and this is about the time, and this is why I'm bringing this up. Mm -hmm. They're about the same age as Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union's son. Mm -hmm. And when I saw this, I'm like, okay, I was like, well, I wonder if she knows because everybody do what they do around me. Little people, teenagers, they want to talk. They just mm -hmm. tell me. So I call her and I say, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And then, so she knew where I was going. And she said to me, she was like, girl, let me go. I'm frying. I'm about to burn this fish. Right? She said that. That was my time. I said, okay. I backed up. Which means that she saw it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So she knew. So I didn't have to go and be like, hey, because I said a little bit. But she knew and she had to get off the phone. So she didn't want to talk about it. However, at that age, because just like what Nick was saying, they didn't know their bodies. So I communicated with the, you know, the child. Yeah, because wasn't a teenager yet. But guess what? Now that child like women, period. So 
at, at that same age. So we're talking 11. Their son is 12. So it was a child, a male or female? It was a male. Okay. It was a male. So it's like, okay, you're saying this and this is what you're doing. And I see it and I'm watching it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then you go and you address the issue. But the parent didn't want to hear it at the time. And we still cool. And we, I just dropped it and yeah. let it go because I knew from the response that, okay, she knows. And just as a friend, I feel like if, you know, somebody knew something, please tell me so that I can get, like you said, ahead of it and say, okay, well, let's work through this. Let's, let's, yeah, let's talk yeah. and let's sit down. And she knows that it was coming from a good place because I'm never a malice uh -huh. person. I'm not a malice person or malicious but the, person. But the child is, is, is heterosexual. Now the child is strictly heterosexual because just when Nick said, uh -huh. not knowing yourself at that age and just imagine if at that time, because that child was kind of like this one, you know, when I heard when mm -hmm. uh, Dwayne Wade showed the video clip, sounding just the same. And it's like you do a reassignment and then all of a sudden, boom, and this child is grown now and it's strictly heterosexual. You're talking about Little little Nas, the one that did Old Town Road. Yeah. Shout out to the writer from uh, Newcastle. You know what I mean? But on that song, yeah. Old Town, hey, you know it had to be Old Town Road way back in where we are. <laughs> yes. I'm like, why is he talking about that? But yes. Mm -hmm. He um he now what's the girl he thinks she's beautiful what's her name uh, my man is your man girl I can't even think of her name right now he guess SZA. what SZA yes he loves SZA what's going on with well Lil Nas is gay I didn't and he, know that. and he came out that he was gay and then mm -hmm. but he didn't have no reason so now he's looking at her like hey wait a minute so it's a difference between being greedy or they call it sexually what? fluid uh -uh. than uh like your women now let me finish this one and this is going Throw, this threw me for a loop. I was shocked. I, mm -hmm. I was like, what? Um, I seen a little girl. This little girl, she she looked like a little boy. Looked like a little boy the whole night. And it looks weird. It looks like a little boy that's pregnant now. The the Right. Surprise. So, you know, when you make those decisions, it's like, okay, wait a minute. You like girls. This is, you, this is who you are. You a stud and you doing what you're doing. But then you're pregnant. So you like Boys, too. So I think, like, the reassignment, kind of like you said, I would say wait. Mm -hmm. You know, so I agree. And I had to share those stories because they don't know. And just like you said, as an adult, you don't know. Right. You know what I mean? You'd be confused as an adult. Love Studio audience, you want to chime in? I think that uh, children are children, and they do not know. And that's why they have overseers. Because you are to train them in the way they're supposed to go. When you are a child, mm -hmm. you are... Uh, Oh, you want to play with dolls. Girls uh -huh. want to climb trees and build things and all the above, but that doesn't say anything for your sexual orientation. What are you dealing in sex at all about at that point? Mm -hmm. You bring them up in the way that God put them here. Mm -hmm. um, I say kudos to the mom mm -hmm. that is saying that's my son. Yes. That's my son. Now, if this son that is young right now, grows up to be a man and makes a conscious decision for himself. A lot of young people are not making conscious decisions. It's a fad for them. And to me, all of the, the nonsense that's taking place is an insult. It's an actual insult to people that are really um, gay or, or whatever you want to call it, but um, they know who they are. Right. And they're not running around with banners and all the above. I think that when they do that type of thing, it's an insult. Mm -hmm. Because okay. people that are true to themselves, they're not running around, swinging off of uh, tree limbs, wearing mustaches and lipsticks and all of that other stuff that's, that's taking place. So to me, it's like an insult to them uh, versus saying, yay, we're free. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like an insult. I think that people need to be true to who they are. I think that children should grow up before they do a whole lot of things. A lot of people are allowing children to make decisions that they have no business making, and that's why we have parents to guide them. Then you have grandparents to even help the parents because there's different, there's levels to this life. And I don't think that a surgery like that should be done because this is what a child wants. What are you doing with all that stuff anyway at 12 years old? Thank you. My I understand that children are mischievous, but you catch them in their mischievousness, if that's a word, is, do I get a dig on it? Yeah, we all know yeah. <laughs> in those type of behaviors to shut that down because you shouldn't even be dealing with that type of stuff, period.
as a child. But I don't I don't know that if the conversation is about them wanting it a switch because of like a, a sexual desire or or I think I think the conversation is more or less the person feels like they are not what they were born to be. And like it's, I, it's, I don't know if that yeah I don't know if the, if the issue well, about the sex same, is it. It's the same thing. Let's let's look at this. The whole um, LBGQ I don't know the rest of them the, I the letters. It's TIA, I think. Yeah. Okay. Because it keeps mm-hmm. adding. Community, you just accept people for who they are. That's why today's show is it's okay to be you. My thing is, why do people care? Because it boils down to who's sleeping with who. That's it in a nutshell. So when you say that, that's when it's like, even people are like, okay, well, I'm coming out and I'm gay. Yeah, I'm going to love you the same. That's your personal preference, who you choose to sleep with. Mm-hmm. I really don't even care. And it's amazing yeah. how people are that consumed with who's sleeping with who. As long as you ain't sleeping with somebody I'm sleeping with, we all right. Okay, but, but children be children. But right. I, I think I think though, you gotta you gotta re, like for the overall acceptance, the movement of the acceptance. There's a lot of terrible things that happen to people who wanted to be who they were. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I mean, like we can't. Hence you, us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you Black can't. People. I mean, you can't forget that part of it. And then, then you had like the AIDS epidemic, where it was like. Mis- a lot of miseducation. Correct. It was like, hey, these people are bringing her on, like the plague and the, and the, you know, all that other stuff people would say around that time. Like, there's been a lot of persecution behind this, you know. So it, it, it's, it, it's one of those things where I can see families being concerned because they're like, well, are you just gonna be walking down the street and somebody just decides to beat you up just because of you, just because you're being you? Now, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot. Just, just but it. just like the live studio, one of the live studio audience members said, they said you when you got lipstick on and mustache, and you 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 just like to to me I understand you, I agree with you as far as like that's like a slap in the face for people who are truly dealing with this. It's like, do you want the attention? Is it a fad? Or are you really gay? If you're really gay, I don't think you just walk around and be like, how you doing? I'm gay. You know what I mean? It's not that. That's why I was like, it boils down to who's sleeping with who, and why do why are people so concerned with who somebody else is going to bed with? I just don't get it, and maybe it's because of me, because I accept everybody for who they are. You want me? You want to act like a dog? Okay, well I'm scared of dogs, so don't go barking around me, because I'm gonna be alarmed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just do you, <laughs> and all is well. Why can't we just accept people for who they are? Go ahead. Do you remember the little boy that was in kindergarten class? And in his class, he was the only boy that was seated at a table full of girls. The way yes. the teacher had her classroom set up, mm-hmm. one table was all boys and little boy toys on that table. And the other table was all girls. And this one little boy, she sat at the girl table. Yes. And every day, she couldn't understand why that little boy would not get in his assigned seat. So he was being punished because he would not sit at the table with the girls and with those girl toys. He kept going over to the table with the little boys. So, I'm gonna say this. When I go up to the school to find out why are you calling, and I look at the room and where's his seat? There's his seat and to have to tell the teacher that it's probably because all the boys are over there and all the girls are over here and the toys are different over here than they are over there. Why can't you even see this? And you're trying to force him to sit at this. Yeah. To, you're trying Basically, to force him to sit on. at this table and play with these toys. Otherwise, he's being punished. And she, that was not right. She did it on purpose. And it's like. Be- because you shouldn't, like in any class, if you're going to, like, for example, you had a lot of years of Head Start. We know you do. Go ahead. And, you know, I, love, I love Head Start program. If I had money, I would give it to him. But the, but the point is, is that, like, in those things, you give the child the opportunity to seek out where they want to engage and play and that sort of thing. So even if you had, like, a small group setting like that with those different tables, she should have broke up the class in, in a way that where there would have been diver, di, diversity, yeah. diversity at the table. So, exactly. so you shouldn't always have to have girls play because the, the real insult there, I mean, the insult, I, I think she purposely did it, but I think the real insult there is that like there's certain opportunities that come from playing with toys, quote unquote, that are 
made for boys that, that like there's math, there's science, there's engineering involved with that, that kind of stuff. And so if she's sitting a, a group of girls at a table and it's just teacups, I mean, there's math and science behind that too, but why wouldn't you give them the opportunity to have an integrated experience? Put a trunk you know? in there. So yeah. that, that, was, that was a suggestion made. No, she's just was, a bad teacher. That was uh, her and, classroom, and that's the way that she was setting it up. Book. And he wouldn't participate. It, it, she did it on purpose. Right. She, he wouldn't participate. And, like, Because there's a lot of other questions I want to ask. It's a whole bunch of other questions. Well, see, he was taken out of that school eventually. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, other things had transpired, and so he was removed He was the problem that. child. That's he was the problem well, child, and you got him right there. It's a her. But like she they, said, she was able to see Sometimes teachers make it. problem children. Exactly. Let me tell you. So at so that, that point, again. now you got this child here. Funny story. Now you got this this one boy at the table with mm -hmm. all girls. And it's right by your desk. Right? And then you got a chocolate piece of cake right there. Kindergarten. Mm -hmm. The child comes home. Clearly is mine. <laughs> he comes home. He was like, I was staring at that cake. I think she saw me stare. So he's not playing with the teacups. Mm -hmm. he, now he's looking at this cake that's right on your desk. He said, I was staring at that cake. I was staring at that cake. I think she saw me staring at that cake. He said, she came over there and she snatched that cake and threw it in her drawer. I fell out laughing. I said, you want to eat the cake? He was like, yep, I want to eat that cake. Why would she have food out? Let's, I don't Why know. Why would she have cake out? Like, I, I mean, know. like, what is she doing? She's she trying, she trying, she trying to pick. She trying she's to trying like, pick. <laughs> but here's what's so interesting. A kindergartner. A kindergartner, five years old. So he's not interested in these toys. Well, I'm going to look and see what you got on your desk. Yeah. Of course he's not paying attention. And she believed wholeheartedly, and she was an older teacher, she believed wholeheartedly that everything, you know that book, Everything You Need to Know You Learned in Kindergarten? Mm -hmm. She believed that big time. What? Now here's the thing. Let me and she wanted to teach him everything. And then he said, she put him out the class and sat him outside. Mm -hmm. Kindergarten, we ride past there, and he was like, that's where, I'll say her name, it doesn't even matter, that's where Miss Grace sat me outside. Then she denied it. Now, why would a kindergarten make that up? Mm -hmm. This child is now 25 years old. School's not there anymore, but when the school was there and he was older, he still said, how traumatic was that? Yeah. Every time we ride by, he was like, yep, that's where I had to sit out there by myself. I, be I believe that. Because yeah. he was crying. Yes. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> you got me in this room and you torturing me in front educator. of these children. You know, I mean, like, you but nobody, people. nobody really, uh, you know, when you said, that's why I said, say it again, because there are bad educators. There are yeah. good educators and there are some bad ones. Yeah, there are good students, and there are some disruptive ones. And, and there yeah. are some creative ones that sometimes certain teachers just don't know how to communicate with them to direct that energy somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and, and I have witnessed it. And the reason I wanted to elaborate on that story, and I'm glad that you said that there are some bad educators, because sometimes we do need to listen to our children yeah, yeah, and hear what they, they have to say. But as far as, like, decision-making you would hope something like that mm -hmm. back to, to Zaya because I want you know respect yeah. him. Um, Zaya, it's like you have to listen to your child mm -hmm. to see where they are so that they don't decide to kill themselves like you said, and you don't want them being beaten up because of a hate crime because there's some evil people out there. Yeah. But even when we have like Jesse Smollett. I mean, that's what they had him. Juicy black. Small A. Yeah, Juicy that's Small A. Yeah, out. that's what they call him. Where they was like, here's a black history moment. The mm -hmm. only person. <laughs> they said, the Juicy people. Smollett, the only one. Uh, to fake a hate crime? This, uh, it said something. I know you saw it, Nick. Where it said, Juicy Smollett, the first black man to lynch himself. To mm -hmm. lynch himself. Jeez. That's what I was like. Hey, the internet was again. They do it. He did it. And. Of course, they're bringing that back yeah, out. Yeah. They're bringing that back out. Count. I mean, six counts. Right, six even though they, it went away, but they're bringing it back. They in should Chicago. have brought it back. They, it shouldn't have went away. And, they, and honestly, they, 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 I don't know if there was a way to charge a department, but when that lady dropped the charges, I'm like, what is that about? You okay. Know, it's crazy. Interesting. So that's why I wanted to bring that and elaborate on that story because when you go in and you assess the situation mm -hmm. and you having, you know, lots of experience yeah. in the education of the younger child, I'm like, how? Because I, I, I mean, just a personal experience I had. It was, it was actually, you know, when you used to pay like twenty dollars and you would pay, you would pick an instrument to play. Yes, 
Yes. And, and I picked the trumpet. Or the trumpet might have been the only thing left. I don't know. <laughs> but, but either so way. The trumpet <laughs> picked you. <laughs> ah, the trumpet, the trumpet picked me. <laughs> right. But, but, the, but the point was, was that I remember not, I remember, and I should have communicated this to my mother better, you know. But I remember, like, I was like, I'm never going to that. Because the, the class was like, you could either go outside. You said you never what? You, you never what? I the guy, I mean, the guy, he, he, I truly felt like, I can't even remember the teacher's name, but I truly felt like he did not want me in his class. And I was the only African-American person, only minority, you okay. know, let's put it like that, only minority in, in this uh, particular music course or whatever. And, like, this guy, he would just not, he would not engage with me at all. At all. And so I said, well, the hell with this, I went outside. <laughs> what, recess? You know, yeah. Recess! You know, <laughs> you know, but the point was, was that, like, here it was, I was being, I was, I, I felt as if I was being discriminated against, but I didn't, I didn't express it the way I could. Like, when you know, when, when you, when you think about things that you wish you could have did differently, that was bad for me to hold my, my uh, third grade self hostage over that particular <laughs> situation, but those are the things that sometimes when people, when, when they're like, well, why would a person be that, that angry now? Why are you angry about... Because it's the building up of just being mistreated for no reason at all that just makes you just like, when when you finally do get your voice, it may not come out great. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But sometimes, it, you know, you, sometimes you want people to feel the pain that you're feeling, you know, so... Okay. I, I can uh, respect that. We were having a conversation and um, we have like... Okay, so you being in early uh, childhood education, uh -huh. when you see that there's a parent and the child may say something to the effect of, you know, like they were harmed by their parent or step, you know, you check them out and all mm -hmm. that other stuff to see abuse. And we have, um, and, and this happens often, where you'll have a Caucasian person that's like, okay, I want to make sure that there's no abuse taking place at home. Let's look at the situation before, and they hurry up mm -hmm. and they're like, "Okay, you were hitting," and they want to call CPS. Have you experienced those situations where you had to look at like the culture part of it, and not that it's okay to beat your child, but maybe like a parent decides to spank their child, and then their child come and they say, "Okay, well, my mom did this, and my, or my dad did mm -hmm. this," and then the Caucasian person is like, "Call CPS. Go ahead, Nick." You we went through that when we were younger. My brother, my dad. When he disciplined us, he did have a habit of going overboard sometimes. You okay. Know, you know, black parents back in the day. Well, this one time, I guess he whooped Brian so much, because I forgot what Brian did, but he whooped his behind so much that the boy couldn't sit down. Okay. Yeah. Teacher must have called CPS because one morning, on a Saturday morning, knock on the door. CPS come to the house to talk to me and Brian with my mom. My dad wasn't there. Uh -huh. I think he was at work or something. Or he might have been gone, but yeah, asking questions. And we looking at this lady like, I mean, because we was used to getting our butt whooped like that. Okay. You cut up, you get your ass whooped, excuse me. Okay. And then you go about your business, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. You go on punishment for a minute and then. And then what? And then it's just like, okay, you, 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 live, you live to play and, and be mischievous another day. Go on about your business. And yeah, that was traumatic for us. Okay. Because we still, to this day, don't know if it was actually the teacher that called or who called. Okay. Especially, you and know. you felt like it was unnecessary? That yeah, it really was unnecessary. Cause my brother was cutting up, <laughs> and he deserved to have yeah. it. <laughs> but, 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 like, a whooping, like, if it's over a period of time and the kid is like, I can't sit down, I mean. That, that's what like, like, I don't. I, yeah, I don't think the intent of your father was to hurt his child. No. I just, I, just, I just think it just happened. But but the this is what I've noticed though a lot of times is that people are scared to report. Yes, some, know, some people are. I, I would say cause, that because there's been times where I'm like, because the, the rule is if you if you've seen it, you got to report it. You know what I mean? So okay, if so there's tell a rule them, that says that. Yeah. So if you tell me, so so let's say it was something like I was supervising. They say, hey, I went to the house and I seen this, and I'm like, well, hey, you got to report that. You know what I'm saying? And then they're, they're like, well, you know, I don't really want it. I was like, well, you get, I was like, it's like you have a, okay, you have a, a more, you have a, a moral obligation and a professional one to report that. 
You okay, can't. You but the thing okay, is, okay. Here, here's here's my question. Just like if you can't sit down, you know, you hear those stories. That's a bit much. But I'm judging. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Culturally, even in our culture, not to say that it was right, but we weren't. Let's be realistic. I, this is just my opinion again. Mm -hmm. We were brought. We, we were, and and we have a history, and slavery is not our history. However, you brought us through. We went through slavery. We were beaten, okay, yeah. and with a whip, and then now, so it's become part of our culture to whoop us into submission, quote, I'm using air quotes, and then now that's how the way we chastise our children with a belt, and you said, oh, I'm calling CPS, that's not the way it's supposed to be. I, I think that you need to look at it from a cultural standpoint, and I'm going to say this as well, when you sit there and you call somebody, get the whole story, talk to the child. You're looking at the bruises, because I remember um, Spike and I, and he was, let me quit faking the funk, because y'all know I'm a straight shooter. I remember whooping my child, and she's fair complected. And when she, and a relative of mine called. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put it out there. Y'all know I don't hide nothing. And a, <laughs> a relative called CPS on me. Now, here's the deal. She's fair complexion, so I already knew, like, oh, they're going to be like, I done beat the brakes off of this child, and it wasn't that bad. So I'm like, okay. I, You know, I was like, I ain't going to send her because I already know. So she called CPS on me, and then she wanted to meet me at a park. I knew it was something different. I'm putting it all out there. Why you want to meet me at a park? What's going on? I had no idea that my child was down in CPS. And then they, they spoke to my child, okay? So they removed mm -hmm. her, boom, the whole nine. And they're telling my child, they're asking all these questions, which was good that they asked all those questions, that the person that took her had her in the shower getting beat the whole nine. But what she did, she put what she went through on my child. Mm. And it was inaccurate. It was inaccurate. So when they were asking my child, they were like, and then you went to get in the tub and then she beat it. And my child like, what? I, I just stole some stickers from the doctor's office. That's why she got a whooping. Mm. We don't, listen, they giving you a sticker. And I put it out there. I only got one. They know who I'm talking about. Yeah. They give you a sticker. Why you want to take the whole roll? <laughs> the whole roll. That's my girl. <laughs> I'm like, what? I was like, oh, no, we're not doing this. And, you know, and I whooped her. I, I am that person. Shout out Karma. Karma be laughing. She's like, whatever they do, that's where you whoop them at. I whooped her on her hands. And she, so she bruised easily. Just like me. And it's like, it wasn't that bad. But guess what? I'm stopping this right now. You want to be, be, look, in the biblical days, what if you stole, they cut your hands off? Yeah, they would. Guess what? I just whooped she your off. I whooped your <laughs> hands. And, you know, she got her arms <laughs> But some, you know, somebody else put what they went through on somebody else, and it was inaccurate. Yeah. And it's like, I, I mean, okay, okay, wait a second. Yeah. And then, you know, and I ended up sharing that information. But I'm, look, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm sitting there, I see the little paper. I'm like, what in the world? I was like, what they call? Who called? They called because I work too much? Because that's what I always worked a lot. But right. I just thought it was just really interesting. And you have to, again, listen to your children. Because exactly. had they just took that adult's, information you'd have been in jail girl in jail child sitting there like what and then they had to do a follow-up and so my son sitting there he looking he said i said where are you going he said i'm going to hide he was like she about to get us taken away i ain't going nowhere <laughs> i was like please don't hide they gonna think i got you doing i was like just sit out here so you know the end result was good but you can't just what what you experience you can't push that on somebody else and it was inaccuracy, so we do need to listen to the entire story, even when you have a child that may have, oh, yeah, I got a whooping, but, okay, well, what else happened after? I asked those questions. What happened after? Well, my mommy, what she said, she was like, you know why you got punished. We love you. All of that was after, but nobody asked that. They just see this, and it's like, whoop. I said, whoa, wait a minute. They let her know it was a teachable moment. They let her know what happened, and she stole here we are. This is what we're doing. Let's talk about what happened afterwards, after you got your punishment, air quotes. Go ahead. I, I, I was just going to say, like, from, okay, when I was when I was working in Head Start, I was in social services mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So one of the things that, that I would implore upon my staff to do is that if they've seen something, because 
it's sometimes it's okay when you have abuse and neglect, especially let's talk about issues of, of neglect. Okay. Like, because sometimes those are like you can go into a house and you see this, you see that. And I'm telling people like, well, what if you seen that, that like, let's say you, you, you thought that there was no food in the house. Well, if you see there's no food in the house. What are you doing to help the family get food in the house? Boom. Bam. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what steps have we done to solve the problem before you go blowing the whistle? Because obviously, the program is income-based. You know what I mean? So if you're, not, if you're not doing the right work to intervene, you can help. You can make a problem become a... You can make an issue become a problem. And there's some yeah. parents that will eat. Even if they're in that situation, they'll make sure their child eat and they will go without. You don't know without asking. Right. Don't ever assume anything because you know what they say about assuming. You make an ass out of you and me. And that was no. One, you just make an ass out of you. But, but that was one thing though too. We had to really teach people to ask the questions they felt they were uncomfortable. Okay. You know, and then one thing is like, hey, do you have enough food to eat? And you a know, lot of people it, don't, especially the yeah. older children. They mm -hmm. won't tell you that they don't have up. Yeah. Know. But they, I mean, but if you like, we would have those one on ones with the parent quarterly to, to mm -hmm. have those conversations because the thing is now so if a child let me ask you this question uh -huh. if a child came to you and directly said i'm hungry what do you do you can see it sometimes but if they told you they were yeah. and they said i'm hungry is that and some of these children feel like if they say i'm hungry you're gonna call cps so they're afraid to even say it and i'm gonna say with when you look at a child and you see them and they say, okay, my stomach hurt, and that's their complaint. You'd be like, what's the real story? Yeah. They, they should be able to be, they should, just like you said, they should be able to say, I'm hungry, and we as people, just neighbors, if, if a little child come over and say, I'm hungry, instead of picking up the phone and calling, it's like, let me give you the resources that's available mm -hmm. to you that's out there, or let me contact somebody and let you know, okay, this is available to you. To fix the issue. Because yeah. remember back in the day, you could go eat over anybody's house. You remember that? Mm -hmm. I don't know where they was getting that food from. And they wasn't making as much money as we make it now. <laughs> well, one thing, the, the thing, the issue is when you take away the, all right, I don't, I'm, I don't know. I'm just going to say it like mm -hmm. this. When you work in those situations where you do like social work or you have a caseload of families and all that kind of stuff, you... It's really up to you to set the tone on how that family looks at what you're doing. Okay. Like, are you truly there to help me, or are you truly here to try to pin something on me? And if it's something is wrong, are you trying to help me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, like, so that that the the biggest thing is how you build that rapport with with the children. So, for example, we may see a child. We may you, if you interact with the teachers and you know, okay, this kid when he eats breakfast, he's eating everything. Then ask him for seven. And sometimes you just get kids as big eaters like that, right? Mm -hmm. But then you can think like this. Well, what's, what else is going on with that family? So that, that social worker should look at their assessment of the family and say, well, when we talked about these particular things, I know the family is on food assistance. Maybe they don't have enough assistance to get through the month mm -hmm. or whatever. So they got a subsidy. So how can I help them get a subsidy to the food subsidy that they currently have? And that may be going to a certain food bank or, or learning meal preparation or how to better uh, spend the dollars that you do get on foods that can last you. Or, or going back, this is one thing I always say. When your money get tight, go back to making it from scratch. There you go. Yeah. And that's you know, in a nutshell. You, you can save so much more money. And I want to say kudos to, uh, and I can speak for Youngstown City School District, because what they implemented was during the summer, because a lot of, you know, yeah. little people, they'll come in and they, that's all they have is just the breakfast that they give away and the lunch. And they stopped with the, remember it was like reduced lunch and you yeah. had to take lunch. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets a lunch now. Yeah. Everybody yeah. gets a breakfast now, yeah. which is good. And in the summer, you can go. The children can still go. And get yeah. the lunch and breakfast. So that's we a cool thing. We used to thing. love going to the summertime, uh, in the summertime going to lunch. <laughs> the, 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 that's the issue, thing. The issue there is, though, is that, that the poverty rate is so high that everybody is, that it triggers this thing where it's like, okay, everybody gets free lunch. But I think that's... So it's a good thing because it. It, it helps, but it's a bad thing that we have, we have a community that's so, in, that, that, that it's in poverty to where you have to have these systems in place. Well, that's a bad thing, you but know. I'm glad y'all feeding the low people. Yeah. Feeding the low people. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's hurry up, get through this, so we can go ahead and talk about the good, good stuff. Justin Bieber, he shaved his mustache. Kudos. 
Yeah, so he, his wife didn't like him much. Remember, I told y'all he looked like you saw him look like a porn star. Yes, like, what he the did. Fuck? He did. Uh-huh. Yeah, that 1970s porn star. Like that he looked very horrible. He Sorry, like, Justin, horrible. But so I'm glad he shaved that off because yeah. it just it just like you said, it looked like he was having trouble growing it. Yeah, you know, it was like uh-huh. it just didn't look right on you. All right, surrogacy. How do you feel on surrogacy? How do you feel about surrogacy? Kim, here we go, to girl. You mean like pregnant, carrying somebody else's? Child? Yes, I don't. See an issue with that? You think that's a good because it's more popular now. If if someone wants to have a baby and someone is you know willing to carry that child for them and and be the surrogate, I really don't see an issue with that. Okay, how do you feel about surrogacy? I don't I don't see an issue at all because there like she said there's plenty of women who want children and can't have them. Mm-hmm. So if there's someone willing to carry the, the child for them so that, you know, they can have what they want, mm-hmm. then go for What's it. What's your thoughts, Rubo? That part I agree with them about, but now it's become a, a like, it's become a, a fab thing now to say, okay, I can, I can give birth, but I choose not to go through Because I don't want my body pregnancy. for you the know? stars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, when you start to do those kind of things, like, it's one of, like, it's like, you bastardize the science, you know, that, that brings a lot of people happiness because they can have a child. But you just do it because you don't want to... Go through it? Yeah. It hurts. I mean, you know, <laughs> but that's the part of, I think, like, and I never gave birth. You know, I was there. I seen it. <laughs> I seen it too. Never gave birth. Seen it. Hey. But I think, like, that sometimes, though, that's the thing that kind of, like, makes you... I, I don't know. I mean, because it's hard to say because you... Experiencing your child coming into the world gives you this identity of um, this of, y- of your nurturer, your protector role. And from my personal experience, okay, you know, and I just kind of feel like when you like, well, like, it's like when you got these people just like, well, I want to have kids, but I can carry the kids, but I choose not to get stretch marks. Eh. It's a little different. Yeah, I think so. And probably already got stretch marks. Oh. Probably do. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something. It do hurt. And shout out to Chi Chi. She told me because I asked her. And that's why I said, listen here. Whew. <laughs> Do it. Look, looking at it, be like, oh gosh, I can't believe it. I was just a participant. I was, you know, it's in it. I'm like, I'm in it. I got to deal with it. Here we go. And then when I got pregnant the second time, I was like, now I remember why I was like, oh, I ain't doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that when she, Chi Chi told me something, I asked her a question. I said, does it hurt? And she told me, yes. I appreciated her honesty. And then she followed up, so I'm feeling you. She followed up with, it's worth it. And I said, okay. And the whole time while I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with, I just heard her voice. She was like, it hurts like the dickens. She said, but it's worth it. And then after, it's not a worth it. Like, oh, I did it. It's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that's for real. Like, you know, you have a whole nother life inside of you. And people who can't have children... Because of health issues, I think it's amazing that somebody is generous, just like mm-hmm. you all were saying, to say, okay, I will loan you my body because it hurts like the dickens. <laughs> and I will give you a child because it's the semen from the male and it's the egg from the female. And it's like, okay, and I know somebody that actually did it. And I thought that was just like amazing. And they love the child as if, well, it is their own. And I think that that is also you know, mm-hmm. what plays role. It's like, that's that's a part of me. And they just instilled this and she's the carrier. So kudos to the people that actually volunteer because they pay you to be a surrogate right. parent as well. I had um, a doctor ask me if I ever thought about surrogacy. And I, no, not for me. Because then I would feel like I'm detached from my child. Or they ask, well, do you want like a donor aid? No. I mean, it's my husband's sperm and someone else's egg. I, I and I know this, I don't know, I think I would still, I would feel detached okay. from my child. Okay. So I was like, I like no. your honest opinion. No, I, I did, I opted not to do that because I have health issues and that's why I don't have any kids. But then I'll be done, uh, pull the Janet Jack, mess around, pull the Janet Jackson and when I turn 50, then I'll be telling everybody, hey y'all, I'm pregnant. Because <sighs> <laughs> I do have a couple women in my family on both sides. That have that were late bloomers because of health reasons because they couldn't get or never thought they could and things like that. The next thing you know, it was a hey y'all I'm pregnant. We look at you old as dirt and you having to be so that's I I I that's gonna end up being me. 
Okay, so I but think you that's going to end up. You being think me. that you're not carrying, just like he was saying, you would be detached. I, I think I would be detached. With, even though it's my egg and my husband's sperm, if someone else is carrying that child, I think I would feel detached. The same with if I got a donor egg, and yes, I either you know, if I get a donor egg and I'm the carrying the and the filling, right? And exactly. But even if I get a donor egg and I'm carrying, to me, when I see my child, I won't see me. I'll see my husband, and I'll see the donor. Because wasn't it an issue with, um, what's her name, Shepherd? I think her last name is Shepherd. Sherry. Sherry, where she, her, and her husband, and they had a um, child, and somebody else was a surrogate, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Uh, I think she was, somebody else was a surrogate, and then they ended up getting a divorce, and she was, like, detached totally, and people were saying, pretty much calling her air quotes again, like allegedly scumbag, you know, she they people were really, really rude toward her, but she wasn't feeling like he, and he wanted child support, and he wanted child support, and it was like somebody else's child, and people felt that she was wrong for feeling that way. No, well, no, because I would feel that way, but I, that's why is, I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, the I, thing I, is, I you put your name insightful. that's good insight, and, and right? Yeah, but if you put that. your name on that birth certificate, then you have to take responsibility. But yes, that's I, that's why you have to make that decision before you go through with it. Okay, but I, I think though that we're you kind of got to look at the issue of like giving birth and being a parent. You know what like I mean? It. Like, like, it, like it's kind of like because you like get an adoption. People, you get you get adoptions. You get people who take on family members and all that kind of stuff. Like, like sometimes, like it's just if if it's in you to parent, you take those opportunities whenever they come about. Okay. You know what I mean? It sounds kind of weird, but no, 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 I was I was I ran into my niece the other day. Well, she well, uh, well for the sake of conversation, my niece. So, um, you know, I was just talking to her, and then I like, I'm like, start talk, running down all these things and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm talking to this this kid like she's my kid. She's not my kid, but I, but I have a fondness for her, and I want the best to happen for her, right? So you you use those parenting. So moments being a parent, you're, but I so, think being a parent, you're a parent. To everybody, like if you see something wrong, you actually say something, even not being a parent. But it's really interesting that you should bring that up because it's funny how people that don't have children, they show them how to parent yours, don't they? And then you'll be like, you yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking to you, be like, that child need this, and you need to do this, and you. Do. <laughs> I'm what, I'm you got all the advice. I got. 50 million God children and several and several of them that I, I would have for months at a time. Okay, so okay, so I would have literally so you actually for months at a time. So I I've experienced it. Then my nieces and stuff, I would have them all the time. At one time, like when my brother, it was his first wife. Uh -huh. You know, he took on responsibility of her two children because okay, so the father was absent. Go. Okay. My mom, you know, they had just got married and everything, and they were moving to a new duty station because they came from Alaska. My mom wanted to give them a chance to get acquainted with each other, so we kept the kids. So, therefore, I got attached to them, still attached to them. So, that's that was the thing. It was like, um, so, yeah, I, I, I am opinionated when it comes to kids, but listen, especially with my godchildren, I've helped raise, especially one, love her to death. I practically had her when she was up to like four or five years of her life okay. all the time. Especially when she was a baby. I would keep her. Her mom would go on a little adventures. I'm supposed to keep her for the weekend. I ended up with her for a whole month. She said adventures. Yeah. <laughs> she was. There was one time I went to the house knocking on the door to take the baby back. And she, I can hear her and her friends in there giggling. She going, shh. I'm like, Heffa, I can hear you in there. Don't you want your child? She never did answer me. So I had her another month. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. I, if I, I want a dog, I, I would have to get a babysitter. Boy, that. So that was yeah. my child. Okay, yeah. so... So, so you have we, we had a relative growing up where like they would come they would come for like the holiday and they would go home after they would come for Thanksgiving and end up leaving after Easter. Oh! <laughs> you know, but it was like I mean that was you know that was the you know it was better that that happened than, than the alternative. Okay, because they were good. But but that was the situation. Like it's unfortunate. Like some people are in, in that thing. But this is what this is one thing I want to say. I think like the the thing that really bonds you to that kid, especially when they're young, is like when you got to get up and change that diaper. Or, you know, you hear that <laughs> oh, crying okay. in the middle of the night, and okay. you're like, okay, like like that sense of like like something is wrong here. You got to okay. do something, and that, and that's doesn't and, and 
early on, just having those experiences just in, in our house, like my mom was always taking in somebody, um, you find yourself being all inclusive of people. Okay. But there's a movie called Private Life on Netflix that, that talks about uh, a couple that is infertile and their struggles. Oh, it's is really it? okay. good. Okay. Paul Giamatti. All right, we're going to get to you in a minute with the movie guy. Well. Okay. Black women, they say that we suffer from superwoman syndrome. Are you guys familiar with the superwoman syndrome? You mean like the, the song? Oh, man, don't even start. That's something else. <laughs> no, not the song, just superwoman syndrome. Are, are you familiar with that term? Yes. Okay, go with it. Um, Kimmy, I'm going to go to girls. Don't let us know what superwoman syndrome is. Go ahead. Well, in some studies, it says, and I don't know if it's true or if it's our program. Oh, I that, like that lip color. <laughs> Lipstick distraction. Go that ahead. Because the perception is, let me be careful how I say this. The perception is our men are absent. Okay. And because our men are absent, women have had to step in and assume the role of breadwinner, nurturer, caregiver, and all of these other things. And so it's almost like the, the gender roles have blended. Where it was once upon a time, the male did this, the female did that. Females do it all. And we don't know how to let go. Because we are the nurturer, we are the caregiver, we are the breadwinner. We, we have the, the feminist movement. So, and for, for black women in particular, because the perception or what we've been told is that our men are absent, yes, we think we can do it all, we are doing it all, and oftentimes we burn ourselves out because we don't know how to not have to be all, do all to everybody. Okay, now you have the definition. So, do you think that we suffer from that? Meaning even in current, you know, with like a new relationship, you know, how does it affect our overall once we have reared the children and been the superwoman? Well, I think our, I think our black men tell us that. Not all of them. Yes. But a lot of times they'll say, you trying to be the man and the woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times I've heard that? You want to be the boss. And when I used to hear that, I used to get really offended because the enemy didn't want to be the boss. But I was it had to be. But I was taught. Mm -hmm. I was taught in my upbringing, and it's funny because I just had this conversation not too long ago. I was raised to never depend on a man. Mm -hmm. And at some point in time, my mother did tell me, "I overdid that with you. I never intended for you to be alone or to feel like you had to do everything or to not know how to partner or to not know how to share the responsibility." Because oftentimes, women don't trust men to do that. Or, like me, I didn't know how to trust a man to do that. So you have to go all the way back to where does this perception come from? Because, yes, black men will tell you, I don't want to date you. You're too aggressive. And I'm not saying me. I'm saying black women in general. You're too aggressive. You want to run the show. You're always being smart, whirling your head around, <laughs> flapping your hands up. When I date women of other races, I don't go through that. So I would have to say that there's some truth to it because our black men are telling us that. I've been told that more than once. <laughs> okay. So uh, how do you feel as, you know, being the superwoman? How do you feel it affected, you, you know, well, it, affected like your some, previous relationship? Previous rela right? Yeah, because it, it, I, I did try to run the show instead of letting the man be the man. But then I've also been in a situation before where when I tried to let the man be the man, he thought he was going to do everything and run over me and everything else. So I had to just reprogram myself to the point where I, I like, like you said, I can, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to depend on no man. If I need to get it done, I got to get it done myself. Because the first one, I tried to let you be the man. You thought being a man was going out there cheating and sitting on your behind while I work to pay the bills. Okay. So if it got to be like that, then I'm going to do it myself. So when I got to the second relationship where I had a man that didn't mind working 18 hours a day and handed me the whole paycheck and just accept giving him, you know, like 20. So you were giving him allowance from his paycheck? For, yeah. How did that work for you? I wasn't used to it, but when I got used to it, I just actually started demanding it after a while. And then when he wanted to do other little things, you know, I started fussing at him and I had to like sit back and realize 
I was wrong because okay. he was working like a dog, working hard for that paycheck. Yes, he was giving me to pay the bills. I was paying the bills, but the rest of that was his. I should have actually set that aside. Here, babe, it's in the drawer or babe, it's in the bank. Whatever you want, go get it. You know what I mean? And, yeah, it, it was hard. So now I'm learning. We have to, uh, uh, that's why we have separate bank accounts. Okay. You mind yours, I mind mine. But if he needs something, I Do got him. Do you have a joint? No. Okay. We had a joint at first. But that's when, you know, I was doing still, like, in that other mindset. But now. So you brought baggage from the previous relationship right. into the new But now, you know, we like, we're going to get another joint room when we move. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that one is strictly for the bills. But when he needs it, if he don't have it and he need it, I got him. The same with me. If I don't have it and I need it, he got me. So it's like, but, yeah, that he joint one it. is going to be right. specifically for paying mortgage bills, whatever else. That's it. Oh. That's all. Okay. And then we'll have our private, you know, to do whatever we want. Okay, so I have to ask you, uh, Kim, because I know you being a life coach, I know you've seen this. Super women who decide to relinquish the role and feel as though that he's not man enough. Because hmm. it's like, okay, I'm, I'll relinquish my role. I'm used to doing it, and I'll give you the opportunity to show me. But the men aren't. Okay, keep it real. The men are holding up to their part of the deal. Or like, let's say she's superwoman and she has her stuff together and all is well. And he's like, okay. And then he come up short paying the bills. And she's used to doing it. It's like, okay, you want to be the man of the house, man it up. But they're coming up short. That goes back to what is the definition of our roles. Okay. We are taught that certain things are done by one gender. Other things are taught by the other. I mean, done by the other. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the case in all relationships. I had a, a couple once for about 10 years. You know, she was paying all the bills. And I don't mean he was going to work, she was going to work. But he would come home, he would give her the money and, you know, handle the bills. And there were things that needed to be done around the house that he wasn't getting done. But in his mindset, I'm going to work every day and the bills are getting paid. And why are you tripping? Because this isn't done or that isn't done. And the more I talk and... We are all a product of what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. we got to go back to that. So when I started asking her questions about her parents and him questions about his parents, as it would turn out, she was used to her father handling all this stuff. Okay, so she, her example. In her was... mind, a man can go to work and still come home and, you know, put up the cupboard doors and do this and fix the car and mow the lawn. Because that's what she was exposed that's to. that's what she thought the man's role was. In his family... As long as his father laid that money on the table, his mother made sure everything else got done. So when we talk about let a man be the man, let the, what exactly does that mean in this relationship? And I think we often take a lot for granted because of what we've been taught gender roles are. But I have seen couples where the man does all the cooking. He prefers to cook. He likes the way his food tastes. And the wife is happy about that. So you have to go back to the beginning of what your relationship is really all about. Okay. All right, from a male's perspective. Are we talking about the black home? <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. That's, all we, that's all we can talk about. All right. That's what I'm we got experience on. Yeah. 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 Like, we can't talk about nobody else's no, right. like, I, I did a, I did a little Your bit of... Your glass house. I did, a, I did a little bit of quick research. <laughs> right? What you got? What you got? And so, like, when it's... When it's, when it's uh, when the, when the superwoman syndrome is looked upon from like a white perspective, I would say mainstream white perspective. Okay. Because from what I saw, that they look at it as like, well, the lady who feels like she has to do it all, right? Volunteering, taking the kids to the athlete, you know. The There's a white school. home. Okay. Well, then, from <laughs> that's that's about, okay. Because they showed a woman. Who opened up her shirt and it, it was an S in on Superman? Our chest. S on they got the car on the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so like, like the the issue there is like in there, and 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 then when they look at it, they're they're like, well, it's not. I, I think like the, the 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 difference that I just saw was that usually the the black woman's superpowers is, is triggered because of the necessity to survive versus like the white person's like from what I just saw the white woman's. Uh, mainstream white woman's experience of just being like well this is what i must do i must have the career i must have i must 
be the mother who bakes the cookies and who does the book sales at the school and all those things like but it's more or less like it, it, it's it's not viewed upon as the linchpin to the family survival okay like the like the black woman says so so if we're taking a perspective the black woman's uh plight in this situation historically I mean, we have to we have to talk about slavery, then we have to talk about rules that were implemented by the government as far as fair housing rules, and then the war on poverty, and who can get benefits from from this from the state, and and that kind of thing. And then you talk about the absentee of black men in the workplace, mm -hmm. which is probably the most the probably the most paramount piece of this piece is that the black men didn't have opportunities. Okay. For, for I'm glad you brought that like, up. Like black women did. I mean, now it may not have been like, okay, it's the job that people thought was a good job, but it might be like, well, I can at least go in here and clean these particular houses on this day and all that other stuff when you can't, when a man can't find work or they're displaced from employment because a white person needed a job. And this is, I mean, I'm, this is his history. This, 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 this is his history. This is where it comes You know what I mean? So, so like there was a necessity. So there was, there has been a system in place to to make black women not value black men because of all these particular things, you know what I mean? And then then we then we kind of buy the narrative of like, well, that's no good this, no good that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And sometimes a person can be no good. Let's <laughs> talk, let's just, <laughs> let's let's out there. That. <laughs> but a lot of times the issues can be how no good is this system that's stopping him from having an opportunity. All right, I, I like, I like, I like. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I like your point. Yeah. So, and I'm glad you spoke up. Yeah, now the problem is though, like I think we're, we're not in a, we're nowhere near that shift being rectified across the board. Okay, right? no we're not. But the, but the issue becomes that there's more opportunities than there ever was before. Not mean that there's more. Not to mean that there's an overwhelming amount of opportunities, but there's more possible opportunities than before, okay. which were minimal. Then, you know, but but the, I think that the thing is like how do how do we go forward knowing that like we're kind of like in this Renaissance period of the celebration of the black family. You know, I mean, that could have started with the Cosby show or even before that, it, you know, the, you, you know, I mean, if you look at it on television and they, everybody japping up the Beyonce and Jay-Z thing. But I mean, if you got billions of dollars, it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be. Maybe it's not. <laughs> but um, but I mean, look, but we're in this thing where we kind of have to put more value where okay. the value is being placed on like the black black lives matter. And when we think about that, we can't just think about police brutality. We got to think about all kinds of inequalities that we've been fighting against since since we came over here. Okay, yeah. and like it's funny because everything we're we're talking about today, uh -huh. starting from you know the the gender assignment issue and everything and and gay and every, to what we're talking about now, all and this is Black History Month. Go ahead, come on, come on, cause all we're time. relate to slavery, and and that's. What's really annoying me because what they are doing is putting that as our history started with slavery and it did not. It did not. And that's what drives me nuts that we focus on that. And even in the history books, it's like, why are why is it that our history I mean it was paramount, let's let's yeah. be clear on that. But why is it that we have to focus on our history being on that instead of us being kings and queens? Can't we go all the way back? You know what I mean? Like well, if yeah, we gonna put it from we go, the time that we came here. And that brings my next point. If you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. Mm -hmm. You're not telling me my history is slavery. Because I know that I was a queen. Right. Okay, I know that my ancestors were king and queens. And they need to put that out there of course, and then show how to. we became slaves. Because let's be clear, I'm going to be honest with you, let's just look at even today, right now, and i got to hurry up because we're running out of time. When you look at that, how did we all become slaves? Because guess what? It was somebody like us that convinced us to go on a cruise. Y'all right. better read y'all history, and I'm gonna call it a cruise. Or we got stolen, stolen from our land. But but mm. here's the thing: it go. It, that ain't it. That that that's not it. My thing is that when you go back and you look and you're like, oh, okay, hey girl, listen, we can go over here and we can do this and that. Somebody talked you into it instead of you reading for yourself. If you listen to my show for the last ten years, I always tell you guys. 
Read and research. Don't just take what somebody is telling you as true and you just go with it. You have to read and research it for yourself. Because I'm going to tell you, listening to somebody else is how we all came up on these boats and came up over here. Okay? Because trust and believe. We are not a trusting people. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. We're not a trusting people. Mm -hmm. So it had to be our own who convinced us that this is a good way. That's why I'm going to put this on out there. Make sure you guys vote. <laughs> Do your own research and not just what somebody is telling you or what somebody is advertising you and you trust this individual because trusting an individual is how we became slaves. Now, y'all go ahead and read the history on that and I'm going to go ahead and let that go and I'm going to move on to this part. How do, and I'm going to ask you, Kim Ham, to go to girl. How do you get over a situation that was never acknowledged by the person who wronged you? How do you get over the situation? How do you get over a situation? When I said, and I'm saying, William, since I said that we are a, we are not a, we're forgiving people, but we are not, we don't trust. We're like, okay, what you do us wrong. It's like, okay, you got one time, boom, okay, now I'm side eyeing you. Like, we can be cool, but I still remember this in the back. And forgiving people, I want to put this out here, forgiving people don't mean you forgot. Right. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't think like, oh, you forgave me, it's supposed to be over. You won't get that chance again. Okay, so just as a people overall, and this is not a race thing, mm -hmm. how do you get over something that was never acknowledged by the per the person that wronged you never said, I apologize, or yeah, you're right. They just let it go. The first thing you have to do is look at what part of your thrive system was attacked. We want to feel valued and worthy. Mm -hmm. We want a sense of gratification and satisf satisfaction. And we want to feel security and control. Whenever something upsets you, it's one of those factors that has been triggered. The one thing that we have to learn to do as people is maintain our own sense of power. At the moment that you allow someone else to control how you feel about yourself, at the moment that you allow someone else to um, make you feel a certain way about things that you do, who you are, what you've accomplished, you have literally given your power to that person. People offend you intentionally to satisfy their own weakness. But we don't. Can you say it. that again? <laughs> People offend you intentionally to satisfy their own weakness. Now, they may not be aware that that's what they're doing, but we all have the thrive and the need to survive. We survive and we thrive. We survive and we thrive. And if you feel that somebody's coming at you, or if you feel that that sense of value is being attacked, you're going to react. So oftentimes, when someone has hurt your feelings, it's not even about you. It's about them. But you have now allowed it to become a part of your own psyche, and now you're all stressed out about something, and sometimes people don't even know they've hurt you. Appreciate the value of your own power. That's where it starts. And find someone to help you learn to embrace your sense of self. A lot of people don't know how to love themselves. We are so quick to say, love you. You are so quick to say, embrace you. We say it every week. I say it because that is it. But That's we my have model. To, but we have to start we have to, teaching oh, people here's the thing. how. Here's the thing. First of all, find you. That's right. That's why I say find you, embrace you, and love you. That's where why it's in that your, order. Where is your sense of worth? What gives you a sense of gratification? And what makes you feel secure and in control? Once you can identify those things, you will thrive off of that instead of what people are feeding you. When you don't know who you are, when you don't have a sense of self, think of when you first start a job. Think of when you first get into a relationship. All of your thoughts are, what are they thinking of me? What are they thinking of me? What do I need to do to satisfy them? Some people don't know when to turn that off. Some people don't know how to balance it out. Sometimes it's good to you know, measure how someone else perceives you, but not to the point where you allow it to define you. All righty, there you go. Hey, Rugo, it is that time. What's going on in the movie world? <laughs> um, it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, really, right now, there is a movie called The Photograph that was um, out for Valentine's Day. This stars Issa Rae and uh, Lakeith Stanfield. I haven't seen it, but it's it's been getting fairly good ratings. Well, let's talk about what you saw. Well, <laughs> what I saw. Yeah, let's okay. talk about you that seen. movie, guys. Yeah. What I really want to talk about is what we should be revisiting during this Black History uh, moment. It better not time. be Roots. No, I didn't put Roots on the list. Thank but, you. Go but, ahead. But, but Roots is worthy. 
of being revisited. So I want to give you a list of movies that you should check out if you haven't seen. And if you have seen, go back and rewatch it. Because one of the great things about the movies on this list is that they're timeless. Like they don't lose any quality. And that's because they were done with such care in the beginning. Okay, go right? with it. Okay, so The Learning Tree. The uh, story and novel that was uh, written by Gordon Parks. Okay. So that would be one. It came out in 1969. Uh, Glory, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman. Actually, okay. every black actor, every black male actor in the world was probably in there except for Sam L. Jackson. And he might have been there. I might have been <laughs> extra. I don't know. But I don't think he was in there. But that, that that's always worth re-seeing. And then Carmen Jones, 1954. Uh, hey, I remember that movie. Like, yeah, with Dorothy Dandridge and uh, Harry Belafonte. And it was a... Um, it, the reason why this is important is because it was a black adaptation of a of an opera that went on to have to go. They got nominated for two Oscars: Dorothy Dandridge for Best Actress, and then the soundtrack or something of that nature. Okay. They, they didn't win, but they got nominated. Okay. Um, Higher Learning, John Singleton's movie. Oh star yeah. On that too. I think that's an important movie to go back and and look at just because it really talks about. We talked about a lot of. Youth coming into their own, and sometimes the best way for that to happen is the college experience. The yeah. college experience, mm-hmm. and I—that's where I got my name yeah. from, Malik. Well, that's where that husband got, husband got the name from, Malik. And uh, Malcolm X, Denzel Washington, Spike Lee team okay. up for that particular movie. Great movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Denzel later got an Oscar for Training Day, but I think that's because they didn't give him one for. Malcolm X. He should have got an Oscar for Malcolm X. I think he earned got. his Oscar for training. He, he, I mean, he, he earned it. He did. Because he it was it. so out of what we thought yeah, he was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so from his other characters. Yeah, he mean, showed he, us he could act in that movie. He, he was not a good he, guy. He, he Why did I it. like him? <laughs> I mean, because it was like, oh, he was fine. Look, he, he ain't cute than any other one. I was like, he was fine that day. But they want to take him out. But the point there was that, like, it happens often where there's actors who get snubbed. And then they get, I mean, not to say he shouldn't have got nominated for that. But so he you think it was a sympathy award? Like, you should have got it for this one, but we missed that one, so let's go ahead and get it. I, I think the question becomes, can you remember who he went up against to win? And sometimes when you can't remember that, then you know that person should have won. And that's you know, I mean, that's a good way to look at it, and, 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 and vice versa, because also on the, on the list is co- the color purple. Oh! She won yes. all the Oscars. Yes. Didn't win none of the Oscars. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? but there was a story about how come they didn't yeah. win. Yeah. Go and with it. Still, Tell Spielberg. Us. Oh, go ahead. Okay, well, I heard it was Whoopi Goldberg who uh, actually threw a monkey wrench in that. There was a comment that um, she allegedly made, and at that point, the movie was snubbed. Now, whether or not it is true, I don't know, but that was what I was told. We heard alleged. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, even if she did make a comment, it shouldn't have derailed the whole film. Exactly. You know, I mean, because. Of course, it shouldn't have. Where do you live? Yeah, yeah, but the thing I'm saying is, like, <laughs> Check. Do, we, do we know? Oh, do we know the movie that beat it? Yeah, I, yeah. What was the movie? I that forgot. Beat it? I but, no the, idea. but the point I'm saying is, is that sometimes the award doesn't give, doesn't really, reflect. it doesn't really represent, yeah, reflect what the what the movie is. So, Color okay. Purple would be one of those things. Okay. A, uh, Raising in the Sun, the 1961 mm-hmm. version with Sidney Poitier and Ruby D. Not okay. that. Not the play. Not that one with uh Oh not the new one. Did, yeah, whoever no, he was, oh, my, whoever yeah, he was no, at the no. time was it P. Diddy or Daddy Puff, 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 Puff at the time. Puff, 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 I don't know. But not that one. And then uh <laughs> Puff Daddy Puffy. I, I often think that we need to go back and see Get Out again, because I just you know, it's one of my personal favorites. Uh-huh. And that wasn't that long ago, go ahead. Yeah, and then for the small screen, I would say Good Times, Blackish. And the women of Brewster's place. Oh, the women, women of Brewster's, Brewster's place. place. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. one. That was good. Super all right. woman, all of them. When you talk about the superwoman, I'm, all of them, and they're like oh, they like some sort of yeah. superwoman role. Yes, that that that's a good one. You said what would you? What else did you say? Was, oh yeah, you black black. Blackish. Blackish. Yeah, yeah, you like that. You're a big fan of blackish. I, do. I like that. And what's the one before that? that you good said? times. Now, good times. Listen here, I love me some good times. Uh-huh. They, just like we brought up last week with Michael. Remember I said Michael Evans? Uh-huh. Rest in peace with Lona. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was just sad. Sweet. But those were like foundations. Those were like foundations. Mm-hmm. And watching television, those sitcoms were good, like different strokes. It was like, oh, man. And they had like the white person being superior. It's like, 
oh, okay, well, we could get adopted. And I'm sure that was every orphan's dream was to like, hey, let me get adopted over here and live lavish. What other uh, good sitcom that was out there? Like, good times, they never got a break. I mean, it was like, but they made it work. So they lived survival mode. When they said that we was in a, a I mean, depression, I was like, what? They had, they had that, like, I can live through that. They had that tone of realism to it, mm -hmm. or they kind of took on that series. I mean, Jeffersons. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, the Jeffersons yeah. to me was a landmark to you. Uh -huh. that, that, yeah, that really was. Then, that really was. Then you could kind of look at... So you got know. Good Times, the Jeffersons. I want to say A Different World, but I don't. See, I didn't really... Cosby Show did their thing. A Different World was just a college life, but I, I'm with you with the higher yeah. learning. That was more, mm, yeah. you know, A Different World just showed you how college is and okay well if I go to college this is what's going to take place and that, actually it was Jeez. some truth in there because school day showed you how school college is day. <laughs> that should be on there did you ever I went to college school, school day, day. So, but I mean, I'm not saying that you can't watch other movies. Right. Oh, but I like that. I like that. Yeah. But these are some of the ones you said were timeless. Yeah. And yes. Here's some, a, yes, and they are. Here's one I think that's important that um, should have made the list, but I just thought of it now. Hollywood Shuffle. What is that? Oh, yeah. Hollywood uh, Shuffle. Which, uh, Dwayne, was it Townsend? What's yeah, his name? Robert oh, Townsend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, that that is... Eh. Like, but like, like, you're the movie guy. Especially the story behind it, because it was like... He tried to um, audition for, I forgot what the role was. What is it called again? Hollywood, Hollywood Shuffle. Shuffle. Hollywood Shuffle. I'll make sure. They I'll... did parodies of yeah. different movies. There you go. That, okay, that I thought it was something. But, but, roles in. Yeah, but from that movie, it birthed like Keenan and I, I mean, Keenan, it was, the, the Waynes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember. Did, is that when it, they birthed the Waynes, you think? See, I'm thinking, wait, Hollywood Shuffle was before I'm going to get you, sucker? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. way before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It like came out like, I think it came out like 88, maybe 89. Because didn't that come out before uh, In Living Color? Yeah. Well, Living exactly. Color, yeah, but um, I'm going to get you sucker was before 88, 89. No. Yes. Hollywood, yeah. well, yeah. Hollywood Shuffle. Y'all look that up because we're running out of time. All right, let's see here. Nick, what's going on with the horoscopes, girl? The horoscopes for the week of February 24th, which happens to be my birthday. Hey! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Thank you! Pisces, make sure to check in with yourself and understand your own emotions before doing what you can do, be what you can to be there for others. Aries, there's a control issue you can't suppress any longer. The sooner you figure it out and deal with it, the faster you'll be able to move past it. Taurus, your intuition and psychic ability is in high gear. Listen to it and put those skills to work. Gemini, there's a lot of confusion in the air right now, so wait before you act on it. Gaining more clarity first will serve you best. Cancer, you'll feel more at ease than usual with your creative impulses, which could catch the eye of the right people who could put you in a leadership role you've been wanting. Leo. <laughs> Pop flips. Okay. Leo, it might be hard not to get carried away with your steamy thoughts about that special somebody, but opening up about your desires is a must as it lays the groundwork for sexy fireworks. Virgo, go ahead, Mel. You'll be feeling especially generous while plotting a special getaway or date night with your lover or dear friend. This will lead to a memorable time. Hmm. She's looking at me like, really? I'm like, look, I, I, got, the, I got the thinking emoji. Hmm? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Who, what? Go ahead. Okay, uh, Libra. <sighs> Though you're prone to avoid conflicts at all costs, facing this head-on can be worthwhile uh, worthwhile effort to... Uh... You don't sound like you enthused on Libra. Go with Libra yeah. one more time. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, we'll do this again. Though you're prone to avoid conflicts at all costs, facing this head-on can be a worthwhile effort to bolster your bonds. Okay. Yeah, just yeah, just go with it. Just go with it, Libra. Just go with it. Scorpio, try to stay centered in your own emotions while being there for others. Uh, the fact that you're so sensitive 
to their pain that you might start feeling gloomy yourself. You don't want to do that. You, you want to be there for them. You don't want to take on your, uh, their issues. Sagittarius. Higher ups will value your exuberant and uh, your exu how exuberant you are and open you are, seeing it as a sign that you're truly devoted to your work. Okay. Mm. That means more money in a, a high position. Capricorn, get out of your comfort zone when connecting with your loved ones. The results can have your heart practically radiating. And Aquarius, you have a knack for pinpointing important details now, as well as initiating conversations that can lead to uh, lead you to the most useful information. Go ahead and act on it. You never know what might happen. And those are your horoscopes for the week of February 24th. Yeah, all right, y'all heard it right here. So I'm supposed to be going on a date or something? Uh-huh. And I'm paying... It was, yeah. Look at, look at, look Super at woman. God. You, you, you being woman. generous. You never know what generous. might come out of that. Hey, you might not know. All right. We know that today's topic is it's okay to be you. I need people to be exactly who you are. And just like Kim said, you guys know my model. I always say it over and over. And it's okay to be you is my slogan. And I speak on it's okay to be you. And it is finding you. You have to find out who you are first. Find you. And then embrace it. You may not be the same, but embrace who you are. And then, of course, love you. And I'm going to continue saying that. You got to love who you are. You embrace it. Say, okay, this is me. I'm going to accept it. And I'm also going to love me. I'm going to give you some tips on how to sell yourself. Once you say, okay, this is me. This is who I am. This is it. You have to sell, sell yourself daily. Look at the positive. Don't be a complainer because we know how many of y'all out there complain, complain, complain. If you complain about the job that pays you, let's be real because you can't say that the job, you know, you complain and tell someone, oh, my boss is stupid. My boss is this. Your boss is signing your check. Okay? You putting in 40 hours a week of work. You making sure that you are not late to go to work for somebody else. Put that time into yourself. Accept who you are and say, okay, this is me. If you are, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit or if that's who you are and you're saying, okay, I want to start my own business, you have to sell yourself daily. You have to be positive. You have that person. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I talked about on being inspired as well. I know somebody that does everything to not do anything. <laughs> Wow. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. I, I don't know how you, I mean, they do the bare minimums not to get fired, but they are so busy trying not to do work at work. That takes more energy to me because I'm sitting there like, how many times you going to rewrite that? Like, I just can't do things over and over. You going to rewrite the doggone, and I'm speaking from a nurse, the report sheet, how many times? Like, what, what you using? You know what I'm saying? Like, Come on, create your path. I'll tell you guys over and over, create your own path and leave a trail. And the reason I say leave a trail is like, okay, she did that, boom, I'm going to leave a trail for you to come and follow. If you need some assistance, if you, anybody here that's in my presence right now or, or under the sound of my voice, y'all already know, you can inbox me, you can ask me anything. And I will help you. If I can help you, I will help you. If I see that there's something that um, I did or doing, or if I, let's say, if you decide, okay, well, I want to get into radio or I want to get into something, and you're like, how do you go about doing it? Or I want to start a podcast. How do I do it? I'm going to tell you because keeping it to myself does not benefit me. It does not benefit me. If the people like you, they don't like you. If you got one follower, guess what? You're still going to have that one follower while you're keeping all the doggone information to yourself. Come on. And I told you guys, I shared with you before, when I actually heard someone that was rapping and became successful, and this, the little people are looking like, oh, you made it, and they ask you a question, and you tell the little child the game is to be sold, not told? Come on. That's crazy. That little boy don't know what you mean by that. Right. You know what I mean? And then what did you do? You pretty much just knocked on his self-esteem. And the parent, you know, you know, that could have been one of your people that supported you. Well, guess what? Now they're not going to support you anymore. I don't want to be that person to be like 1973 dash to, you know, infinity and beyond. <laughs> My dash, I need to release it. Let me help you. However, let's put this out here. 
I am not going to help you if you are not willing to help yourself. I'll give it to you and then you, you want me to do it too? No, I can't do it. If you want to write a book, write it down. I'm not going to write it for you. What are you doing for yourself? What, how much are you investing in yourself? And then to tell me, somebody told me, I don't have time. Well, if you don't have time to write your story, you know I ain't got time. Right. Come on. But there are writers out there that you can pay. Because you could go clock in, make sure you're not late, you got a great spirit, seven before, seven after, clock on in and out with somebody else, and then pay that individual if you don't want to take time for yourself. And again, practice. Practice putting in that um, 40 hours a week in yourself. Cross off. Don't allow, you know, even if you work in other jobs to pretty much invest in your own business, don't allow them to take all of you because you'll find yourself really really tired really really exhausted and then you're like okay well i can't even put it the time i want to put into my own mm -hmm. remember you are first and i'm gonna say this if you don't hear me anytime and i'm then i'm gonna be done <laughs> when you are investing in yourself and you are working on your own dreams and goals and i seen this somewhere i can't remember where where it was like uh, the dream is free but the hustle is sold separately that I liked. There, that is so true. Right? <laughs> there is. You have to tell yourself, when it comes to me, there is no plan B. Okay? So there you have it for the Q-tips. And remember, it is okay to be you. Everybody is different. We're not made from cookie cutters. Everybody is different. You want people to accept you for who you are. You have to accept people for who they are. Now here's the deal. You have a choice. Do you want to deal with them for who they are Monday? Or who they are Friday, depending on how you feeling. But you have the option to choose. Say that one more again. You have the option <laughs> to choose. Okay? Options. We have that. You want to add on to that? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you want to say? No, I was just saying that, that, that thing that you said, is it reminds me of that, like, uh, 1% inspiration, 99% uh, uh, perspiration. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, all that. You got to okay. fight. You got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight. Yeah. And you can, do not allow others to judge your level of success. Because if you do that, you're going to fail. And that, that's honest. I'm, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. Go ahead, Kelly. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, sometimes what we need to do when we are pursuing... First of all, let me say thanks to you, because before I did my podcast, I knew nothing about it. I learned that from Mel's School of Podcasts. So hey, hey. That out there. <laughs> but one of the things that we demonstrate is sometimes it's better to use 1% of your 100 than to try to use 100% of your 100. Get other people to contribute. Do it together as a team, because for those of us who have had business, there's those of us who've written books and did all these things. No, you cannot do it all by yourself. Create your trustworthy ride or die team. It might be just one other person, but you need that support system because when they say it gets lonely, the higher you get, the lonelier it gets because you have to know who is there in your corner to support your dream and not suck you dry. Hey, didn't you say that? <laughs> you said that. That's what uh, Lottie Love was talking about on uh, The Real when she was talking about they had that little mess going with Tamar saying that she had got uh, Tamar fired and wanted somebody that she was helping, allegedly, this is her words, and then she said, I think it was Cat Williams that helped the person as well. Mm -hmm. But then when they didn't have any more money to give them. Now they want to come out and say certain things and just start stuff. But then that person, hey, they looking for the money. You got to do what you got to do. And you right, it get lonely at the top. What's that? Uh, was that the five heartbeats? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. I'm like, go ahead. Which Keenan Ivy Wayans helped right? Hey! Shout out to the Wayans. So him and, him and Robert, uh, Tom, Tom, they did a lot of mm -hmm. collaboration. Okay, go ahead. You want to piggyback on that? No. <laughs> no, it's all there, huh? Yeah. It's all there. My thing is, I, I I cut people off quick now. I never used to be. I'll cut you off quick. With, 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 pertaining to all of that, I'll cut you off quick. Because if I don't feel that you're going to be a positive impact in my life or what I'm trying to do or you always negative about something, bye. I ain't got time. Cut you off. And you're absolutely right because you are in control of your own exactly. positive environment. And that's why and a lot of people can't change have gotten cut off now in my life. Is I it lonely at the top, Nick? Is it lonely it is at the top? Right. Let's go! 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 Let
what she said? Well, you know it's not. Very not good. for me. Very not good. for me because the people that I cut off, and I still got a list of people to cut off, they're negative about everything. And and that That's does, after a while, it's exhausting because it starts to bring you down. I don't have all that to do. Okay. So I, my cutoff list is getting bigger and bigger. So I love you still, but you got to go. Because I'm trying to go this way, and you still pulling me back to your level. What you need to do is, is like, take, you know, look, look and see where I'm going and try to strive to get up there with me. Okay. But if you still here and you trying to stay here and you trying to go, I got to let you. I'm kicking. You, you, you kicking off the ladder. ladder. Get off me. <laughs> Go ahead. Nick ain't getting lonely at the top. She got her Steelers friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, uh, uh, Mr. The viewer here. <laughs> Why you still us? All right. I want to put this out here because we only got four minutes to go. But I have to say this as far as for the footnote. Okay? Separate yourself, just like Nick said. That's today's footnote. Separate yourself and be the best you at all times. I want Kim Ham the go-to girl, uh, what is it, .com? Kim Ham the go-to girl.com. If you have any questions, feel free. Contact Kim Ham the go-to girl. Let me see. Contact Kim Ham at Kim Ham the go-to girl.com. I want you to close up, like summarize the whole oh, show of It's Okay to Be You. Summarize it and show. close up. You are a brand and you are an individual. Know when to be which one. Hey! <laughs> hey! I feel a praise coming on. Hey! And praise, she just said that. Church over. We done, we done did that. Do is there something you want to add to it? Or she did it? Um, Excuse me. Give some encouraging words. To the black man. Because <laughs> we're just kind of like, yeah, put a black man out there. Some encouraging words to our brothers. Keep your head up. All right. This is as simple as that. Just you keep know? your head up. Keep it Regardless. Up. Yeah. Regardless. Anything? Yeah, keep striving. You know what you want. And, and, and you're going to get knocked down sometimes, especially if you've been up there and you're in a different position or you've moved to a different place, it's going to be hard. If you were able to ch achieve success before, know that you can achieve it again and at a higher rate. So just, level. Okay. So be, you know, it, it, it might be depressing at first, and this is to my brother. You might be depressed at first, but work on it. Like, like I've been telling him, you know what to do. You know how our parents taught us. You know what to do. Okay, you're in a different place now. Work. You know you were able to do it before. The next time you'll be much more successful. So keep fighting. Don't let the depression get you down. If you were able to become successful before, know that you can get it again and you'll be even more successful. All right. Last week, audience, any last words? Well, you know what? There's a difference between I think and I know. So just continue to grow through whatever it is that you're growing through. Because you walk differently when you know. Yep. All righty. So here, we'll do this. Kim Ham summed it up. I asked for everybody else's little nuggets of good words and encouragement. Because that's what we do. We encourage, we inspire, and we want to motivate you to do well. Live life every day as if it's an emergency. All right, so be the best you that you always can be. Y'all already know it's okay to be you. That's the slogan. Find you, embrace you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people, shop talk right here on Spreaker.com.